What's up? And welcome back to Opposites Attract Podcast. This is Sonia Ramirez, your girl, and I'm sitting next to Miguel Ramirez. What's up, everybody? How is your day? How's your week? How is your life? Going. Going. <laughs> Why are you yelling at everybody? Am I? You, you, are you started never this thing. Happy. You complain that I'm too low. Now you're complaining I'm too high. You got to find what the middle. What do you want? What do you want? The middle. Huh? It just depends on my, <laughs> I know, I'm on just, how I'm I feel. I'm just messing with you. And I just drink coffee. So I'm like wired up. Ah. There you go again. What? Nothing. Yelling? Yeah. Okay. Get used to it. You didn't say anything last night. Now you're whispering. <laughs> See? <laughs> It's how I express myself, I okay? I am just messing with you. I know you are. Okay. What's up? Nothing. What's new? Man, it's been crazy, as usual. We're all, yeah, you see that? For those of you that are watching, you guys see that we have a new addition to the studio. Looks pretty yes. good, I think. I think, uh, so we got the new sign logo yes. uh, for the background. Yes. And I don't know. I'm going to look at maybe putting some lights on it or... I don't know. We'll I figure, think it looks figure good something out. as it is. I think you so know, too. As is, so. You guys let us know. Let yeah. us know what you think. Yeah. As much uh, <laughs> colorful language you used last night putting it up. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. But I figured it out and it you looks good. You did a good. great job. See, you never surprise me because I already know who you are. Like, yeah. I know that you're anal as shit. And no matter what you do to put it up, this it's going to look great. This thing is suspended in midair. <laughs> Nobody can see that. Yeah, Nobody, well, and it's not. It's not actually on the wall. No, it's not. Yeah, but you guys can't tell that. Yeah. Anyway, I hung it up with fishing yeah. string. You did a great job, baby. So, yeah, it looks good. Why do you so, got to tell everybody? Man, anyway, in the uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, on our last podcast, we recorded that one early because we were going camping, mm -hmm. and then. I was right after camping. We got done on Monday. Uh, why la last why week. even f finish? I mean, we have so many. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm just saying. So we went camping and then we got back and then mm -hmm. I went out of town for work. Yeah. So I just got back into town yesterday. Yes. Let's talk about the yeah. camping trip. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, but you did pretty good with the tent. You and Juan and Gabriel. Like, yeah. It, yeah. We didn't die. I'm, Obviously, I'm we're back. I'm so thankful that they put the tents. Like, they're so easy to assemble now. Yeah. As opposed <laughs> to kidding. as opposed to the experience that you have with other tents. <laughs> well, what's your experience with I other went, tents? I went I went camping before. Where you're trying to grab the tarp and the wind's blowing it but away. That Well, that's what happened with you guys. Yeah, but I'm just saying, you bit. guys, yeah. You know, these tents no, it went today really well. are very easy. Oh, yeah. Not that I did anything, but just seeing... The difference today than like 20 years ago, th things have changed. Yeah. You know, so we had a huge scare oh, our yeah. first day. Okay. Yeah. Our first day. And I never understood why so many people are uptight about not having their, you know, if someone doesn't have their dogs on a, in the seatbelt, because they have seatbelt for dogs. Did you know that? Yeah, kind of. Yeah. And uh, my neighbor would ask me, well, last time, Kelly, when I'm over here throwing names out, our neighbor, we took Jane with us somewhere. And she's like, you're not scared that the dog will jump out or fall out the window? And I'm like, no. Yeah. Well, she jumped out the window. I really don't think she jumped out the window. Well, she's not. She's not going to fall out the window. She, she fell out she the window. Jumped. No, she jumped. Well, we were turning. Because she was on Audrey's We lap. were turning and her momentum was so taking was her lifted. towards the window and yes. she jumped out the window. Okay. <laughs> I mean, she would have hit the door if not. No, because she was on Audrey's lap, baby. So she was higher. And that dog has a big know. ass head. We'll see. So but the anyways, way she landed, she landed she uh, like fine. on her feet. She was kinda. fine. You know, she was good. But that was the first day we got there and it was... Yeah, terrifying it was not, not for a good all way of to us. Start. Yeah, it was terrifying for all of us. Audrey is very, very attached to this dog, yeah. more so than than Frazier, right? Like they have this special yeah. bond. It's really cool to witness and and you know just see them grow together yeah. because they brought it to my attention that she was their first puppy. Yeah, because Frazier was our puppy and Nisi was our puppy, but yeah. ne but Jane is. They've had her Growing since she's a puppy. The, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of cool. 
Yeah, it's cool. And um, and we got to hear some. I thought they were wolves, but Miguel said that they were coyotes. Wolves. 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 <laughs> and uh, but Miguel said they they were coyotes. Yeah, I think that's scary they were coyotes. shit because they sounded like they were really close to us. We could say they were wolves. It sounds better. They were timber wolves. How do you know I that? Know. It w- because I don't think they they told me when we showed up to the campsite. I think they said. I think it was a person that was showing us our spot. They were saying, yeah, at night you'll probably hear the coyotes in the distance. It didn't sound like they were oh, in the so distance. they did say, no, it did not. So, it sounded yeah. like they were right outside our tent. That and an out, we had, it was not a, well, it, it, we had a couple instances with the dogs, with the pets that <laughs> didn't go too well. So Jane, obviously we already talked about that one, but we also had the first night it's getting late. We're hanging out by the campfire and it's uh it's just me, you and your brother and everybody else has gone to bed. And we're just chilling and we have Nisi, our smaller dog. Yes. And she's hanging out with us around the campfire. Nisi's about 14 years old. Yeah. And um we're getting ready to go to bed and we're like, "Where's Nisi?" So we start looking for her and usually she's right around us, but Always. I guess she must have went off to go potty or whatever. Yes. And as soon as we realize that she was missing, we start hearing. Ooh, ooh, is that how owls sound? No. Yeah. <laughs> how is it again? <laughs> ooh, <Okay>. ooh, no. <laughs> yeah. So if we start hearing a freaking owl and owls are big. Like yes. you hear about owls snatching up dogs. and Yes. And uh, Nisi's not a very big dog. No. So, but I think she, she might be too big to get picked up, but know. she might get hurt getting picked up. You know, with mm. the talons or whatever. Anyways, I, I don't know. our I'm imagination not, went off and yeah. we freaked out. I so mean, now we're, and it's pitch black out there and we're, we got the crap. flashlights and we're yes. looking, we're calling for Nisi. And then all of a sudden she turns up. She's just and, prancing. Oh my God. Like I went to go potty. Freaking freak What's your guys' out? problem? Yeah. You know, but we had a really good experience. Um, we should have done this long time ago. Yes. Yes, we really, yes. But the good thing is that now we have everything. So Mm -hmm. it makes it a lot easier just to kind of pack up a bunch of stuff and take off. And there wasn't, it was just my sister, my younger sister, my brother and us. Her her husband, her 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 son, yeah. And then our kids and the dogs. Yeah, so it was, you know, very small, intimate. And we were up by uh, the Grand Canyon. It was close to the Grand Mm -hmm. Canyon. We went and we saw uh, the Grand Staircase that, that was actually Utah. You know that? Mm -mm. Molly's Nipple. You look up Molly's nipple. The kids loved it. <laughs> Joey. The kids, as soon as like they had, so there's like this lookout point and it's, it's a beautiful view of the mountains. And I think part of it is Colorado. Uh, part of it is Utah mm-hmm. uh, and Arizona, obviously. Uh, but it, it's got like a, a sign that tells you. So like if you're looking at the mountains, it's got a sign with a picture of the mountains and it's telling you what each mountain is or what they call it. And there's one that's just like a peak and it's called Molly's nipple. Yes. And as soon as the kids found out that it was called Molly's nipple, they they loved it. They couldn't stop talking about Molly's nipple. They thought it was funny. They Joey to get thought it was funny. To would giggle nipple. every time he would say it. Yeah. The stars. That was cool. That was really cool too. I mean, Audrey was amazed. And Joey the other day was like, Mommy, the stars looked fake out there. Yeah. That that was the first time that I've ever seen like the streak through the sky, like that you see in pictures. Yeah. Like if you've not a cloud, like if you looked at pictures of like, you know, yeah, pretty much pictures of the stars, it's kind of like a the northern lights, but on a tiny little level. Yes. Like you just kind of see a streak that just kind of shoots across the sky. It was pretty cool. Yes, I want to go back. It was beautiful, and being there with our children and just being present. Yeah. Right. Like being present, being there. Um, I did not work. I haven't worked for since the sixth. Yeah. Since August sixth. Yeah. And the entire time we were there, I was just I was present. I was there with the kids. I was there with you. Yeah. You know, and that yeah, was fun. And you feel the difference when you're not attached to technology. So yeah, that was one thing that we started so we had we headed back on Monday, last Monday. And we're driving back home and it's like a five hour drive. So we're listening to books and we're listening to podcasts. And I decide, I told Sonia, I was like, Hey, do you want to listen to our podcast so that we can, you know, decide what clips we want to make for next week and, you know, just kind of check on the podcast, the quality Mm -hmm. or whatever. So we put the podcast on and we're listening to our own podcast 
about TikTok and about all the shit that's happening in the world, in the world. And we're like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck this. Let's go back to the <laughs> mountains and back. just go throw that tent up again. <laughs> Cause we, we were like, man, I'd rather just be out, out in the forest somewhere. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think we need to keep it more on a positive note. No. As long, as long as we got <laughs> snacks, we're running right. out of snacks. It's changing out there. Cause right. if I got to go hunt a squirrel or something, <laughs> forget about it. No, babe. If you really had to do that, I have so much faith in you. Oh, you know, I would figure some, we, I would figure out some kind of trap where I would just trap all the squirrels right. of the forest. And you and Joey <laughs> will have that down. I have no doubt in my mind. I'm going to have that box with a stick where you pull the stick out. <laughs> yes. Yes. So home school started and I need to give, we need to give a huge shout out to teachers. Yeah. I mean, it was very frustrating. You saw me. I was in tears, wasn't I? Like, I, yeah. it was just, it was, it's very, you know, with Joey trying to figure everything out, I start to feel guilty and feel, you know, as a, like a failure as a mother. And I can tell you, I am not cut out to be a teacher. I am not cut out to be a teacher. And having the business and everything, and I decided because Miguel did leave the day after we got home, so it, it was yeah. up to me. So I just decided, you know what, I'm going to focus on the kids, help them figure this shit out because there's no other way, you know, change is difficult. And a lot of times we try to fight it instead mm -hmm. of just giving into it and saying, okay, you know what? It is what it is. Let's figure it out. Yep. Let's yeah. figure it out. There were times where I was getting frustrated, you know, and I didn't, and with Joey, I try my best to not allow my feelings or my emotions to get the best of me. Yeah. And show anger or impatience in front of him because we're trying to teach him, you know, to that it's okay and not or to, to stress, control his, emo to his emotions. Yes. And it's okay to feel a certain way, but just there's a way to express yourself without banging your head against the laptop <laughs> or trying to break something <laughs> yeah <laughs> but i was in tears not in front of them you know but in front of you and you almost feel at times like you're in this alone you yeah. know like everybody else has this, their shit together and has this down and to find out like the teachers this is all new for them and i'm listening to joey's teacher and i text her and i said you know i just want you to know that we appreciate you. We are blessed to have you as Joey's teacher because this teacher. Yeah, that's really good. She, I mean, was so patient. And the way she teaches is like no other. You know, there are great teachers out there. There are good teachers out no, there. No, there's definitely, yeah. And a lot, of, and I felt like at, at the beginning, I'm just like, what is going on? Like, it's so disorganized and I'm getting frustrated and, I, and I'm, you know, s sending short emails to her um, as if she had control of the situation or yeah. what was happening. No, they're, they're scrambling and figuring it exactly. out too. Exactly. And so we're all learn in this together. Yeah. And so I had to have that talk with Joey, you know, about, you know, I told him, I'm like, listen, baby, I'm like, I'm feeling really stressed. I said, and I know that you're frustrated and you're not happy with, you know, how things are going. I'm like, let's work together and let's, let's learn this. And, you know, just talking to him about what stress does to the body. And yesterday things started to calm down and we started to get everything down and there was a point though where I was getting stressed and he said mommy he's like you're stressing yourself out yeah and once he said that I checked myself and I said I'm sorry you're right let me step away let me gather myself and then we can get back yeah you know on this and then I go visit one of Audrey's friends because our internet sucked. So on top of all of this, the internet, internet is not goes loud. down. Yeah. So I go and it's drop like the Audrey off. The off. first day, first week of school, we get a notice on the door saying that they're going to cut the internet off for two days. And then the internet didn't really go out for two days. I mean, it went out for a it good portion of yeah. one day. Right. But then after when we're not supposed to have any trouble, the internet goes out completely. 
the the next the day after that when it's not supposed to go out it should be right. fixed by now right and now like that day we just lost the internet yeah. altogether so the kids were trying to get on their classes and, and go to working. school online mm-hmm. and all that and it was i i had to work offline because yeah. i i couldn't get on anything yeah and i had a tether yeah, you know, yeah, to do your the little bit that you could do. But I went to go visit Audrey's. Uh, I went to go drop off Audrey so she could do her school, her work. And I, well, the mom was there. She came out and she was so flustered. Yeah, and um, she she just broke down and she was in tears. And she has five kids, you know. And I Damn. and I just told her, I said, listen, I'm like, if there's anything I can do, I'm like, you know, if you need, you know, me to take sailor that's her daughter you know and bring her over to my house so that you can work with the others you know just trying to make it work and trying to make it easier so if you're a parent out there and you're homeschooling like we get it like we're all in this together we're all frustrated we're all stressed out of our minds we're none of you know some of us were made to be teachers and some of us are not but you're not in this alone so if you're feeling overwhelmed you know, and you have someone that you can talk to or maybe reach out to a teacher or some people in your community, just somebody, yeah. you know, like we're in this Friends together. You're not alone. It's okay. Everybody. It's yeah. Everybody's okay. going through this. Okay. Yeah. It's freaking crazy. Yes. Yes. But I can tell you that, you know, yesterday was better than the day before and he's getting, he he's getting it because yeah. Joey's the one, Audrey's good on her own, but it's Joey that I have to just be there to calm down because he, he gets very frustrated. Then he gets bad on himself and starts saying that he's stupid. Like it's, it's, you know, so anyways, we're beyond that. He's very negative with himself. He is. He is like, like he's hard on himself. Yeah. And so are you, you're, you're, well, you're, yeah. You're that way as as well. Or me, the Audrey thing is that, and I are not. We're like, it's okay. Like, we're going to get better. This is the thing is, if I'm trying to do something, and it's probably the same way for Joey. If I'm trying to do something, and I know what I'm capable of doing, mm-hmm. and if I'm not doing it to that level, yeah. then I'm not happy with whatever it is. You know? Yeah. But so, he and is he's, and he's very learning. similar. Yeah. 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 But the, the thing with Joey is that with our kids, we don't really let them get on too much technology like well for one they really can't because as far as gaming goes we have a playstation 3 (laughs) like the original playstation 3 and that's all we have we have a little tv box that has a couple games but none of them are like super fun that you want to be playing for eight hours at a time or 12 hours at a time or whatever you know um as far as the computer goes he really doesn't get on the computer too much. Like he'll get on. The only thing he really does know how to do is get on YouTube and then he'll, you know, type the first letters of Transformers and then he'll read a little bit and then click the stuff that he wants to see. He right. knows how to find that. But aside from that, going doing anything else on the computer, opening up a file or opening up a program that's not Google Chrome, yeah. he really doesn't know any of that stuff because we just, you know, we haven't really let them on there too much. Yeah. And in a way, I think it's better that way. Because you always like you hear so much about the other side where parents are, you know, they let their kids and and not to say that it's bad or good. I mean, there's a lot of negative effects to it. But the thing is that we don't really know about that stuff yeah. because it's so new. Like, I mean, if you think about like cell phone addiction or, you know, tablets or computers or all that shit like that is pretty recent. Mm-hmm. You know, like even in our generation, like we didn't have a, a problem with that because we couldn't do it. Right. And what about, I, I told you one of the, a doctor uh, I went to to meet with or talk with, she was talking to me about how 5G is affecting us. I don't know if that's a conspiracy or. mentally. Uh, but this is a doctor. I have, to, I have to look it up. Yeah, people believe crazy shit. I mean, I mean, so, uh, what is it I, called? The, the thing is, that, what, yeah, 5G. You just look yeah, up. Yeah, but there's a name. Yeah, just look up 5G conspiracy. They, they think that it's causing all kinds of shit. I don't know. I haven't looked into it. So I, I can't say that this is the thing. This is what's really messed up is that there's some things that are conspiracies that are just complete bullshit. And then there's some conspiracies that sound fucking insane and they're true. Right. So you're like, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I don't shit. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. But um, no. You know, we you you kind of went off on the the camping, the camping thing. When we went out camping, there was one of the days where your sister and her husband woke yes. up, <laughs> and so they have a tent that splits down the middle. You know, if you guys have seen those tents, it's got a split down the middle, so it kind of has like two sections that you can have people on one side and you yeah. can have other people on the other side. So, um, your sister and 
her husband and their, well, no, their son was going to sleep on the other side with your brother. Right. And they were going to sleep on one side. Right. So I don't know what happened. I think, um, when, well, when they woke up. I know. Well, the night before it was super cold and they were not prepared for that. None of us were prepared. Oh, yes, I was. Are you kidding me? I mean, no, we were, we were. We were prepared for it, but we weren't dressed for it at the time. Yes, but we had I, to get up in the middle of the night correct, and we get packed dressed correctly. And he he didn't think he, he didn't was going to get anything. that cold. Yeah. No, he didn't even bring pants. He had shorts. Oh on. my goodness! So I brought, and you were making fun of me because I brought a beanie and I brought a scarf. Remember, you were making yeah. fun of me. Yeah, yeah. And that saved his life there. Yeah. So that's, that's what happened. I'm crazy. like, hey, I have a beanie and I have a, you know, a uh, scarf. Do, would you like to use it? And he's like, heck yeah. So I gave it to him. And that's what he fell asleep in. Yeah. And so go ahead, baby. <laughs> so they wake up, your sister and her husband wake up in the middle of the night. And they see him like curled up in a ball. And they, the first thing that uh, Juan, your sister's husband, thought is that there was a homeless dude sleeping in the tent. <laughs> yeah. Because all he saw he's was like, the beanie. Who the hell is that? Yeah. Because <laughs> all he saw was a beanie. So we get home, you know, the following day. And I think I'm washing dishes. Yeah. You remember that? Yep. I'm washing yep. dishes. And I swear to you, I just had this thought of everything that was happening in the world. And, you know, but over there, we're washing dishes in a tin can. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. When we went camping, we had for for our first time going camping, we could not have had a better setup. Yeah, because sure. we went to a campsite. It wasn't like out just in the wilderness in the middle of nowhere. And since it's our first time, it was really nice that the campsite, the spot that we got yeah. was right next to the bathrooms. It had they had like little sinks with running water. Right. Um, I mean, it was like maybe the porta potties, maybe like 30. Close. It was like 30 yards away from where our tents were. They even had a shower. I didn't shower, but uh, they had a shower. And you yeah. said it was a, it was oh, pretty it was good. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, so. It was good. It was good for us. Now, yeah. the next level is where you don't have water and right. you don't have a bathroom and you got to dig a hole or do whatever. See, I don't know if I'm like, I don't, I don't know if I'm down for all that. Yeah, either. I don't know. But uh, I don't know. Maybe little by little we can step it up yeah. and see what happens. But um, no, it was it was a, a lot of fun. But we when we got back, we were talking about how grateful like back in the day. Right. Like it was fucking camping every day. Yeah. Like your food goes bad. You, when it gets dark it gets dark there's no toilets there's no running water you had to actually go run to get your water and so while i'm washing dishes and the water's just running out of the faucet i just had a thought and i'm like You're, i am so grateful i am so grateful yeah we got these little lanterns that out I'm there living yes in the times that we're living in regardless yeah. Of what is happening, regardless True. of the pandemic, yeah. regardless of all the riots. Like, I am so grateful to be living in these times. Yeah. Yep. And then so I started thinking about it and I'm like, man, imagine like when it starts getting dark, you got to go around and start lighting all the candles in the oh. house and all that shit. <laughs> yeah, you're I was so like, crazy. I was like, so what if you want to, you know, have some drinks and get fucked up? You know, back in the day, if you got freaking candles lit all over the house, that's not good because you get drunk and fall asleep and then your house burns down. Like, imagine how many houses burned down just because people wanted it's to get drunk that. and freaking Going burn their house down. Going from one room to another, to Hol- using holding the bathroom, your little candle constantly. Yeah, you yeah. have you have that gown that goes down to yeah. past your knees, and you're holding <laughs> the candle with your little hat that's with the little ball hanging like, out. What is that one movie with the prairie? Oh, I used to like watching it. Looking like a Christmas carol. Damn it, I forgot. But no, yeah. And so we just had a moment. Like, I am so grateful to be where we are today, even though everything's happening. So know everybody that, hey, things could be worse. Yeah, definitely. Things could be way worse. So be grateful for where you are. And uh, let's all push through and work through together. Kumbaya, my Lord. No. <laughs> That's for you. Uh, thanks, baby. So yeah, no, but we had a we had a great time, we and did. um, yeah. So when we were in our tent in the middle of the night, Sonia decided she was gonna get a little handsy. No, I'm just kidding. I'm what? just kidding. You were messing Babe, around. We were playing you, yoga. You were, you were, you were yeah, I asked you. I mean, playing. I asked you if you. But wanted this to was in the yoga. middle of the night when it's like forty freaking degrees. Like I'm sleeping with three shirts on <gasps> and a sweatshirt that's zipped up to the top. I have my hood on while I'm sleeping. And I'm like, hey, uh-uh, no, 
I was like, what the what the fuck do you think this is, Elsa? <laughs> Elsa. I was like, trying to grab the fucking icicle. <laughs> like, let it go. Let, let it go. go. <laughs> It's like fuck. I'm going. Back. I'm going to sleep. Why are you putting all our business <laughs> out, man? No, like dude. I, it was the thing is we got it down though, because that first night was cold. Yeah, like, we woke up in the middle of the night and we had to put on all the shit that we brought. Yeah, and yeah. then the next night we already knew, but it was so like the so for those of you that aren't in Arizona, it was it's been a, like 117 degrees. Yes, uh, in in Phoenix. Yes, but. Like I've asked you before, like if we could live anywhere in the world or in the country, mm-hmm. more more than anything, anywhere in the country, like where would we want to live? And then when you start thinking about things, it's like, man, I love it here. Yeah. You know, I grew up in New York mm-hmm. and I love New York and I lived in Florida for a while. Florida's great. But man, I don't know if I would leave here. As hot as it is in the summer, it's so easy. Just mm-hmm. we drove five hours to the Grand Canyon, yes. but you can get a similar climate maybe an hour and a half, two hours away. So you can drive two hours and you go from 117 during the day to about 90. Right. And from 103 at night to 40. (laughs) Right, yeah. And in the wintertime in Phoenix, it's what, 75? Yes. We have perfect weather here in the winter. If you want snow, you drive two hours and it's, you know, three degrees and it's snowing outside and you can go skiing. Yeah. And if you want to party, there's Vegas. Yeah, you can go to Vegas. Like for real. We can go yeah. to Mexico. Right. Dude. Like, we got everything. Perfect. Here. Yep. But I so will. for everybody that doesn't live here, just stay where you're at. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. Dude, yeah. stop selling. Yeah. Stop selling right. Arizona. <laughs> I'm gonna cut this part out of the podcast. <laughs> A lot of people yeah. are already transitioning here. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, now that they're jacking up all the other states. Don't come and jack up our state. But uh yeah. No. No, it was a it was a great time. We had yeah. a we had an awesome camping trip, and and we said like we're gonna we actually you know we're keeping a lot of the stuff together so that we can just plan another one and take off. Yeah. So that'll be fun. Yes. Yes. So right after the camping trip, um, I had to go out of town for work, which was cool. I went to uh, Michigan for a couple of days uh, to do some work, but we went out with the guys, mm-hmm. and I, I went with two other guys, and we went to grab a couple of beers. And it was funny, man, because I'm working. So for those of you that have been listening for a while, you know, I, I was a mechanic for the majority of my career and I was an inspector. So I'm just, you know, working with the mechanics, very blue collar, very, you know, whatever. So now the job that I went to go do was a little bit different. And a little bit. Yeah, a lot of bit different. A lot of it. <laughs> a yes. lot of bit different. So yes. we're, we're going to check on other companies on how they're doing or whatever. And, you know, checking out the stuff that they send to our company and I'm going with another guy from my team and an engineer. Mm -hmm. So we start having a couple beers and uh, our engineer friend starts. uh, Oh, so we have a table right next to us and it's like a a work party or something. It's kind of it's kind of crazy the way the freaking uh, like with the coronavirus and everything that's going on. Like we go to a bar and it's me and two other guys at one table. Uh You have to wear a mask when you walk in. When you get to your table, you can take it off and order drinks or get food or whatever. At this other table, they said that you can only have 10 people, no more than 10 people at a table. They had probably like 15. Mm. And they were obviously, they were all from work and they were partying. And there was this Mylar balloon, like one of those happy birthday balloons, the big ones. Yes. And the engineer, he had already had a couple drinks. And he's like, do you know about the helium? And I'm like, huh? The helium. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, those fucking balloons. And he started getting pissed about <laughs> helium and he's like you know there's a fucking helium shortage and this and that and i'm like dude you get an engineer pissed and he starts going off about the helium conspiracy and i looked it up and it's actually a thing like i guess there's a shortage of helium and i i don't know if they they take a certain amount for like commercial use but they don't have enough for scientific use that's why he was pissed oh. He was pissed because he's like, we need this helium oh. for experiments, for science stuff that we do. And we don't have enough because they keep putting it in fucking balloons. <laughs> and and <laughs> I'm, like, God. I'm like, dude, take it easy. We're talking <laughs> My about kids fucking balloons. love helium you know? balloons, dude. <laughs> so anyway, if any of you dorks are interested, you can look up the helium conspiracy. It, it, was, it was pretty crazy. Though. Like I look it up and yeah, there, it's a yeah. thing. Well, talking about you leaving out of town. Yeah. You know, me being here with the kids, I realized 
that I that you don't need me anymore. Yes. <laughs> You're like, all right, you gotta go. No, I, I okay. So just being very transparent. Like I started thinking about the time where, you know, I was single. Like I lived on my own for quite some time. I did everything my own on my own. I hung the pictures. I took out the trash. I did everything on my own. Right. And to be honest, like I, I feel having you around, like I've gotten a bit Complacent. lazy. But it, yes. And so when you're gone, I I would tell you all the time, like stuff would pop up and I'd be like, what the hell did you used to do before you met me? Yeah. Like, how did you open jars and shit? I was so independent. (laughs) Like I, yeah, I already told you I had a big ass ego. Like I didn't need a man for shit. Fucking put the jar between your thighs or between your butt cheeks. and. But that's what happens when you have a good man, you know, like that's what happens when you have a good man. And what's so funny is one of my friends put a post up on Facebook and it says, if your wife touches these you failed as a husband and it's a picture of a wife um, mowing the lawn taking out the trash barbecuing so she's grilling and the other picture is her putting in her own gas yeah and so it started you know i started thinking about yeah you don't do any of those i i put in my own gas but well, you'll do it but every I'll, once I, in a I do while. It, if we're together, I do it. Yes, yes. And, and sometimes I do it if we're not together. And so like reading I'll, this, I was like, oh, I have such a good husband. So it's not that, you know, it's just you have me spoiled. Like you, yeah. you're the man, you do the thing that you need to do. And not that you that, need to do, but you just go over and beyond like you do. You, you, you spoil me. I think that that's a thing with everybody. <clears throat> what I do think you mean? like. Because there'll be, there, there have been times when you're like, you don't need like something about washing clothes or oh. doing something. And I'm like, Hey, yes, you know, yes. I, I lived by myself before I met you. Like I used to wash clothes. I would cook my own shit. I would I pick know. up my own. I would clean it. I would clean I up. Know. I would clean my bathroom, clean the mirror, like all that. Like I used to, yeah, yeah I know. But, but that, the thing is that when you're together with somebody, then, you know, it, it's, it's a, better for everybody. Like we all a, yeah, make it work a together. Team. And yeah. that's what I was talking to the kids while you're gone. Like I told Joey, hey, you're the man of the house. You know, yeah. you're the man of the house now. Daddy's not here. You know, so he made sure the doors were locked before we went to bed. And there's certain things that he that's did. Cool. But he took pride in that of that's being good. man of the house. You that's know? awesome. Until you came home and you told him that he didn't take care of the pool and the pool is green i, Not, just, I was just messing <laughs> with you him. were it was kind of cute though he was like <laughs> oh like i forgot like i forgot yeah you know but he totally would have like if i would have said okay joey time to take out you know the filters like he totally would have done yeah that. he would he would have because it. he takes pride in being man of the house yeah you know like he stayed up with me we went to bed together like he slept with me he's so cute and he said mommy if i kick you wake me up because this kid is aggressive in his sleep he's just but it was so cute to see him like just step up you know and then me realizing that i must you have me spoiled oh you know? but you're right i do take it personal like i'm like wait what you don't have any clean underwear hold up what you know why did you, you say anything it. and that's what i was <laughs> telling I you last totally time i'm like just that's not cool if the, like, you don't have it's like, it's like clean you underwear get, or socks mm-mm. it's like you get you get mad at me for not telling you that I don't have underwear, but I tell you I was like my thought is not to tell you that I don't have any underwear. Yeah, I was like if I'm on my last pair of underwear, I'll throw on the tidy ones and then I'll go throw a load of laundry in if I need underwear. But I'm not gonna yeah. be like, hey babe, the f- you know what are you doing? I don't have any laundry. Yeah, it felt so good to miss you. Like I missed yeah. you so much. I missed you guys. Like too. you know just and it was cool to talk to you. It reminded me of the old times when we didn't live together and we would like talk you trying to all kick me hours out again? of the night. <laughs> you know, it was just cool to miss you. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 So when we were working, this is something that uh, I actually like. So we went to a, a company to do an audit. Right. Mm-hmm. And we spent all day there. And, you know, we've been working with the management of this company. And, you know, we've been sitting in. Well, we, we took a tour of the facility and we looked at what they do. And then we went to a conference room and we're looking over paperwork and we're asking them questions and, you know, audit type stuff. Right. So we get done and everything goes well and we all kind of pack up all our stuff and we stand up and we're all wearing masks. Okay. 
And this is the first time that I've had to do something like this, but it was just awkward because usually at the end of this whole day of working together and going through all this stuff, all right, great. Nice to see you. You know, you guys did a great job, whatever. We'll see you next time we're in town. And all right, cool. And we're just like looking at each other where normally we would be shaking hands and walking out. Right. But now we don't even know if we should be shaking hands <sighs> or what. And one of the guys is like, I don't know what we should do. Uh, he's like, I don't know what we're supposed to do. And then he was like, maybe we should just bow. <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> and I kind of thought about it. I was like, huh? that's not a bad idea. Huh. I mean, because it's kind of like a handshake. You're showing respect for the other person. You're acknowledging the other person, but you're not touching anything. You just kind of bow. Nice to see you. Yeah. Huh. And, you know, in the Asian cultures, they've been doing that forever. Yeah. So. But that's a good idea, isn't it? It is. It's a good idea. Yeah. It's it's almost even like more polite. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So what are gonna, your guys' thoughts on I'm going to start bowing to everybody when I see people. Well, you, you can bow to this. <laughs> you can bow to this. No. <laughs> so I had someone make a comment to me because I have not went to see my mom. Yeah. Since this have started. I uh, saw my dad, I think, twice at the beginning. And I knew COVID was serious. Now we're talking about COVID crap again. But I didn't take it as serious as I am today. Yeah. Because of our, you know, the loved ones that we've lost recently. Well, this is the thing is that, like I've said before, it's, it's real. It's a real thing, obviously. Yeah. But there's certain people that are in a higher risk. Yes. And for those That's people that are in about. high risk, yes. this shit is very real. Yes. Very real. Yes. Extremely dangerous. Yes. And that's what I was going to talk to people about. Like if if you're feeling the way I'm feeling and you know, like, yes, we went camping with my younger sister, my younger brother and her fiance. And there wasn't many of us, you yeah. know, that were together, you know. I want to see my mom. I want to see my dad. I want to see my sister, my older sister. And we've been invited to get togethers. And unfortunately, I have to let them know. I'm sorry, we're not getting not together happening. in big yeah. crowds. And yes, I feel bad because I am that extrovert. Like, I want to party. I want to go out. I want to see you. I want to hug you. Like, I am a straight up hugger, right? But then, it, but then it's like one of those things like, oh, but you can go camping. Yes. Oh, you can go to so-and-so's party. Yes. Oh, you can do this. Yes. Or so-and-so came over to you. And it's like, hey, so-and-so's like 22. They're in shape. They're healthy. Like, we're all young, healthy. Like, take it easy. Like, we're trying to keep you safe. Right. And and that's it. Like, it's not an excuse to not go, you know, see them. But you can't them. call. Yes. And, and I've been doing that. I've been calling them, letting them know I love them. Yeah. You know, but there's just certain things. Like, I do not want to be the reason for someone uh, that I love getting sick and not being able to pull through. Yeah. You know, and yeah. this is a very difficult time then, for people. It's it's lonely. You ever there's so many people that feel alone right now. Yeah. You know, because of the social distancing and us taking responsibility um uh, for those that we love. And so know that, you know, if this is, you know, some things that you're going through, maybe having a conversation, like I had to have a conversation, you know, especially with like my mom. I'm I'm so close to my mom and I want to see her. And so you know, even wearing a mask. I mean, I was thinking about this. I can wear a mask. She can wear a mask. She said I was crazy <laughs> when I said that. I'm like, I'd go see you. I would wear a mask. And she's like, what? Yeah. Because I'm out still working. I'm out. Yeah, I'm socialized. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, we went camping and. It's tough. And your mom is. is in, yeah, she's, you know? she's in that high risk. <sighs> so it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. You just got to, you know, think about it and do what's best for the people around you. And for yourself, if if that's you, you know. Yeah, and then again, you know, and some it, people that are nurses that I've been talking to and doctors, it's like it. This COVID doesn't have an age. Like you just never know. Yeah. Yeah, it's mainly hitting. You know, the elderly. The elderly are the ones that are not. Not all of them are pulling through. Yeah. But people are losing loved ones that are younger, fit, and in shape. Yes, but that is not. 
the that that is very very rare very rare but even even still i mean this yeah it's just it's just tough and, and like people are getting fed up yes you know because we've been at this for what five six months now <laughs> and no, we, yeah because actually today today i was going through my phone i was looking at some pictures and i saw the picture that we took up on the on the couch with all of us with cough drops in with the fucking medicine and the tissues that popped up no no, no I, I said i was looking through my pictures oh, and i saw oh, it and oh. i was like oh that was when we got sick when was it and i clicked it it was february 28th it mm-hmm. was the very end of february that we all got sick right at that time mm-hmm. and that was when i told you that if this keeps going on i'm going to the doctor because i'm getting you know yeah. i'm feeling it in my chest right so that's that's what makes me f- think that i that we that already had already. it but you know we've been at it for five six months and people now are like we're we're just fed up of being locked inside, not being able to see the people that we want to see and, you know, just wanting to get back to regular life. And man, it, it, it was, it was weird. I mean, it was cool going on this trip, but this is the first time really that I've been out in a yes. place like this. Like I was out in downtown in Michigan, like we were walking around and it's just weird, like seeing the people and, and, it's almost like a game that we're playing. Like hey, you got to put your mask on here and then you can take it off right there and then you can put it on right there and then you can take it off right there. And it's like, it what? It just doesn't make sense. And that's why when I'm, and this is, you know, I told you that we should stay away from politics. I talk a lot with my hands, don't I? That's fine. You watch me when I do it. I've noticed that. Yeah. Cause I'm waiting for you to elbow the <laughs> mic, knock over the glasses and shit. But, but yeah, but because of everything that's happening, you know, everybody, you know, they're talking about like the politics and, you know, all this is being lumped up. And I don't know, like, I don't think anybody knows like exactly what is happening. Yeah. But just, you know, and I'm seeing it's so sad because on social media for, I was very proud. I was going through my post and all of all a lot of my posts are positive all the people that it's all love rainbows and flowers and then you one pops up somebody makes an opinion on politics the president something and all of a sudden it hurts because i see people that know each other arguing fight arguing Yeah. yeah you know and that that just that hurt that that breaks my heart that it just like two friends of yours yes. that are friends, yes. those two are friends, Yes, but then something political that they don't agree with comes up and then they argue between themselves. Yes. And it and gets then real. Ugly. Just yeah. ugly. And I'm like, you know, this is where the division starts. Yeah. You know? Anyways. It's like, it's like we don't even know each other, you know? Yeah. Like when you get, when you get like that. But, yeah. uh, so Speaking of masks or whatever, if you guys want to pick up any masks or anything, if you want to shop on Amazon, you guys can go to opposite to track podcast.com. If you click on the support the show tab at the top, it'll take you to our Amazon link and it doesn't cost you anything extra when you shop on Amazon through that link, but it does help out the show. So if you click on the support the show tab and shop through that Amazon link, it'll help us out. There's also a tab to trust Inc and trust Inc is we are a nationwide mobile notary agency. We do a lot of work with title companies and lenders. So if you are in the middle of a refi and would like to request trust Inc, please go to our website and send us a comment. Yeah. I want to give and him a shout out. Also, you can go to opposite to track As soon as he's done. And <laughs> you can uh, subscribe to the show. You can follow our social media. You can actually watch or listen to the show on our website. And um, yeah, opposite to track podcast.com. We're also affiliates with Libsyn. And Libsyn is who we host our podcast with. If you have thought about starting a podcast and you want to you know, try it out for free, when you sign up with Lipson and you use the promo code OAP for Opposites Attract Podcast, it'll give you the rest of that month for free and you'll get the next month for free for using our promo code OAP. There you go. So shout out to my sister, Ruby. Yeah. She is one of the uh, newest uh, notaries in our agency and she is rocking it. Like She's, she's doing butt. so amazing. Yeah, that's great. And so, uh, you know, it, it's been challenging for her, but she's pushed through. 
you know, because there's times where you make a mistake, you got to go back, you got to correct it. But the first I few mean, she had were challenging. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I remember you talking to her. And most people would have been like, you know what? <laughs> this is not for me. But she kept pushing through. And I am so happy for her because I know what this is going to do for her. Yeah. That's good. And yeah. I, I don't know if I told her or if I told you to tell her, but I was thinking, I was like, you know, if you have your first three or four, whatever are like, like this, like this hard. Yeah. Then, I mean, that, that's pretty good because it's going to, you're going to get some good ones yeah. where you're in and out, everything goes smooth yes. and then you'll be like, okay, yeah. so it can go like this uh -huh. or it can go like this. I called her this morning and I'm like, Hey, what's up? What are you doing? And, uh, she's like, I'm in the middle of a signing. I'm like, all right, money. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm proud of you. Love you. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Uh, real quick before we get off of, or to get back on and then off of the coronavirus thing, I saw an article on AZ Central that I just wanted to bring up real quick. Um, they said that cancer diagnosis is down right now. And a big part of that is because people aren't going to the doctor to get screened because of coronavirus. So it's not that cancer is going down. It's that people are out there that may have cancer that are not being diagnosed because they're not going for their screenings. And that's super dangerous. So if you know, you're so if you're in that risk area, if you were, you're in that age or whatever, where you need a checkup or mammograms, they were talking about, I'll help you with that. I um, haven't gotten mine checked. I was supposed to go I checked actually them. I two checked months them. They're, ago. They're good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> no, but you gotta, you gotta go and, you know, get, get those tests done because they're, they're very important. You know, yeah. you, you can't skip that, you know, just because of coronavirus. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a risk, but that's a pretty big risk too. So yeah, I recently, and I, I don't even know if I, I may have mentioned this to you, but I have, you know, just lots of, they call them beauty marks, but moles. And so I went and yeah. had a full body checkup and, uh, everything was good. So yeah. especially notaries, if you're, you're out there, you're, in the sun, you don't think about it, but the left side of your face, like when you're driving, you know, it's very important to go get that checked. Really? You know, I had a really good friend of mine who. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Who ended up, you know, having Bill, skin he was on cancer. Our podcast, right? Yeah. And so, well, I don't want to put his business oh. out there. Well, you put everybody's business but out I there. I didn't even say his name. Oh, crap. I said good friend. Anyways, it's okay. He put it out on YouTube, so we should be okay. <laughs> this is public information. <laughs> but no, it's very important. You know, if you are a driver, a Nobody's truck driver, talk to us anymore. You know, and you're doing tons of driving, you know, be sure to go get checked. It, yeah. It, yeah. This sun, it, it's, it's, uh, strong. <laughs> yeah, especially here. <laughs> yeah. So definitely. So yeah. So now we're, now we're back getting back in the swing of things and yeah, Miguel good. came home swinging. What the hell? No. <laughs> <laughs> no it, was, it was a good time. We made so. up for lost time. Yeah. Yee. So. What's up, babe? Let's see. What else do I got? What you got, babe? <laughs> what are you looking funny. at? Funny. So we were. Oh, well, oh, I mentioned. Oh, wait, uh, wait, wait. This is funny. Okay. So I don't know if you guys ever seen Miguel. Okay. He and you may have and just didn't know what he was doing. Miguel has this habit, drink, taking a sip, whatever, whether it's coffee, whatever's in his cup, and he licks his liquor, cup. Liquor, usually. Like you'll lick, liquor, yeah. He will <laughs> lick the edge of his cup after he takes a drink. Yeah, because there's usually like a drip. Yeah, it's funny as shit. So when he was gone the other day, my son and I, we were, you know, having a cup of milk together and he did the same thing. Yeah. Isn't it weird? Like what? He may have you? seen me do that. I don't know. No, I can't I, imagine that he no, just does babe, it by himself. He licked the whole cup. Like milk was dripping down the cup and he got the cup and he licked <laughs> up the cup and on this. I'm no. How, I did, how wait, how did that go? How did wait? <laughs> show hey, show me no, with the microphone. Show, show me with the microphone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but it's so funny how we how do you say it? Like the traits, our traits, like how they're passed down to our children. Yeah. yeah. You know, the things yeah. we say, the things we do and what There's they some things pick that up. are just genetic, I, I guess. Yes. That's what I was going to say. Like, I don't, I don't think he's ever seen you do that. Yeah. I mean, cause you, when you do it, it's pretty, um, 
minimal. Like it's not where no, you like can. I, I, yeah, because I know it's a thing. So I just kind of do it real quick. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you could see it on the podcast. I do it. That's why I, I, yeah. tell people, I don't know if you've like ever if, seen me gal. Yeah, for those tough. of you that, yeah, that watch the podcast. Yeah, like, I yeah do you do that. And I saw him do it and I'm like, oh, you were gone. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, Joey, why did you? I asked him, why did you lick your cup? And he said, because there was a drip of milk. There was milk dripping down the side of the cup. Yeah. That's funny. Like, oh. Yeah. That's exactly the same. Yeah. So uh, I was talking about Libsyn earlier who hosts our podcast. If you guys would like to. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no. So I was on Libsyn like earlier, I think before we went camping and I was just checking on stuff for the podcast. Excuse me. Stuff for the podcast. And Audrey. You know, they still heard you through my mic. Yeah, but it's not as loud. It's not like I'm coughing right into the mic. <laughs> but uh, so I'm looking at stuff for the podcast, like downloads and making sure everything's doing what it's supposed to do. And Audrey comes to the computer and mm -hmm. it says Libsyn on it. And she misreads it. And she's like, is that lesbian? <gasps> and I'm like, uh, this is Libsyn. This is where we have our podcast. She's like, oh, but the thing is that I Did think she's probably her? heard the word, uh -huh. but I don't think she has a clue. Well, that's what, what I was going to ask you. Did you ask because her? Because she didn't, she didn't seem like she was wondering or anything. Yeah. It was just kind of like a, you know, is that le lesbian? And I'm like, uh, no, it's Libsyn. Oh, okay. And that was it. <laughs> and I'm like, where the hell? This but morning. She didn't ask any more questions. So this morning when you left to jujitsu. Yeah. I'm here and all of a sudden I hear all kinds of noise, like ruckus coming from upstairs. I'm downstairs and I'm like, what in the world are these kids doing? jujitsu upstairs so it's early it's like before nine o'clock and i'm listening and i hear like a workout video playing and i'm like dude i get have this proud moment i'm like are our kids working out right now like what because i was gonna work out or i was going to work out next door yeah with our neighbor and so I'm like, for real? So I get my phone and I'm like, I got to record this. Yeah. So I'm walking up and I'm listening and I'm like, they are working out. So I go to the door and I'm trying to be sneaky as shit to open the door so that I can get them on video. And all I hear is Joey saying, I'm going to die. And Audrey's <laughs> that, like, you're that not sounds doing exactly it right. exactly like Joey. And Audrey's like, you're not doing it right. And so I crack the door and I'm sitting there and Joey's like, you know, he surprises me and I'm recording and they're working out like Audrey's That's working cool. out, you know? And so Joey's like, uh, you know, he's all surprised about it. Shit. And I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, I felt, I'm like, okay, well we're doing good. We're leading by example. Come to realize that this little boy that Audrey has been talking to yeah. has been, you know, talking to her about becoming stronger so that they get better in jujitsu. So he's influencing her to work out, to become stronger. Which and I good. remember Joey, well, Audrey's like, mom, Joey wants abs. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? Yeah, Joey wants abs. So that's why we were working out on, you know, we were doing ab work. And I'm like, that is so funny. So I look at Joey and he's like, yeah, like all proud. And then I remember what you told me. He <laughs> yeah. asked you. So Joey, they so, take showers together. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Joey asked Miguel, daddy, why don't you have squares? Is that what he said? Yeah, he said, he said, why don't you have squares? And I'm like, squares? What are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, squares. He's like, like, and then he like points at my stomach. He's like, squares like right here. I'm like, oh, are you talking about like the muscles? <laughs> And he's like, yeah, the muscles, the muscles. He's like, how come you don't have the muscles? I was like, because I love snacks. <laughs> and he's like, huh? And I was like, look, if you love snacks more than you love abs, then this is what happens. I was like, but if you love abs more than you love snacks, then you get abs <gasps> yeah. uh, or the muscles, the yeah, squares, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? But, uh, and then I told him, I was like, they're called abs. And he's like, oh, okay. But it was so cute because they were doing burpees and all of that. That's so I good. went, That's good. when I got home from my workout, I went to go mess with Audrey and I'm like, Hey, I'm like, so how'd your workout go? And I'm like tickling her. And she's like, mom, my abs are sore. <laughs> That's good. 
That's good. Let them have one of those days where they can't get out of bed. Well, that is so awesome. That, that might good. be tomorrow. Because if she, if they were feeling like that today, yeah, they're well, going they to have trouble They've tomorrow. been working out. Even yesterday, I'm like, why are you so sweaty? Well, we got to jump in with and them. And she said, because I was working out. But I didn't know that they were working yeah. out. Because I was downstairs cleaning. And I, I heard a lot of things going on up there. But I thought that they were just playing. Yeah. You know, until her sweaty butt came down. <laughs> You got to get the squares again. You got to get the squares. <laughs> oh, man. Dude, That's I. That's cute. It's enough. It's enough with this shit. Like I, I, like, I, like I said. So last look, night. Every, everything. So clothes. You could buy clothes. And they could be the, the same manufacturer, same brand, whatever. Same style. Uh-huh. Same size. Uh-huh. But. The clothes are still going to be just a little bit. Di- like you can grab two pairs of pants that are exactly the oh, same. Oh, yeah. Same size, same everything. But one is going to fit you a little bit yes. better than the other. Yes. And uh, yes. yeah. So like I said, I went on this freaking work trip and I pack up all my clothes. Oh, my God. Thank God. I only had one day where I had to like go into the company because I thought I was going to be going in for like two or three days, maybe. Yeah. So I had to pack extra clothes. But there's one pair of pants that fits okay. The other <laughs> ones are fucking screaming. I, I like I told you, I was like, I look like a fucking sausage, <laughs> like for real. Like I got the sausage casing with my polo shirt, my fucking dress pants. And I was like, I can't breathe. <sighs> I can't breathe. You know, it's so tight. And uh, I have other pants that are the same brand, same size, yeah. same everything. But for some reason, or maybe I haven't worn them and they're still like just from the wash. Yeah, yeah. So you know how when you they're wash fresh, it, they're still, they're, they're fresh. They're fucking yes, tight. Yes. So they're screaming when I put them on. I was like, fuck, man, I look ridiculous. But I don't know. I'm not going to buy bigger clothes. I was like, I did this shit to myself. Okay. So women. Okay. And maybe us women do this because, you know, when it comes to Aunt Flo, she visits us every month like clockwork. No, we yeah. have extra like, you know, our big set of clothes. And I've always, you know, like I have favorite pants that are a size eight and I just love them and I won't get rid of them. And I always know that my weight is going to fluctuate. Like I know that because normally I'm like a four six. OK, right now I can fit in some sixes. They're a little tight. Um, but I told you, Miguel was like, no, I'm getting rid of all this shit because I am never going back there. I'm like, you should at least keep one pair because he had, you have really had really nice clothes that you were just donating. This is the thing is that they were so much bigger that I don't want that fucking excuse to get back to that size. But it's not an excuse. No, no. You, like you said, Aunt Flo, whatever. Like if you want, you can use that excuse. I have no excuses. I don't get Aunt Flo. I get fucking snacks at night. That's what I get. (laughs) So that's why my clothes don't fucking fit. <gasps> yeah. So I, no, I'm not doing it. Like, I'm just going to either look ridiculous or I got to start fucking working out again. Like I've been talking for the last, well, you, since that's fucking the thing, March. Though. We've been working out. No. Jiu-Jitsu is a workout, babe. You've been going three days out of the week. No, it's not the same. It's the eating, babe. If no, you were to get the eating yeah, down right that, and that just go to Jiu-Jitsu, big you would be fine. But no, we work out part. so we can eat. Not enough. Right now. Not enough. <laughs> Not enough. So I know a lot of you are feeling our pain. I know that. I've been talking to, you know, lots of friends and we're all a little bit on the fluffy side, you know? Yeah, it's all good. I'm, and yeah, and you know, and when it gets really bad is when you're happy and fluffy. I was telling right? you that uh, there's, there's, a, there's a big, we're recording this on Saturday. There's a big UFC event happening tonight. And uh, one of the guys that's fighting, Daniel Cormier, DC, he's a former heavyweight champ, lightweight, light heavyweight champ. And uh, he's been known to, like, he also loves snacks, apparently. Yeah. And, like, you see the guys that he's fighting, but the dude is a, I mean, he, he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. And really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Big time. He's a two-division champ. He's, he has, like, very, he's only lost to two people, I think, ever in his career or in his professional career. But, um... Yeah, so he's known for liking the snacks, and there, there's a. I showed you a picture of him weighing in, and he's yeah. like, like he was like, no, I, I wasn't putting any weight. And you can see he's pushing down on the towel to make himself lighter on the scale. Yeah. And uh, I saw him weigh in yesterday for the fight tonight, uh-huh. and I was like, that looks like my body. 
<laughs> I was like, like he's body. got the freaking love handles. He's got the, <laughs> the belly in the front. I was like, but, you know, he's like sitting there making the muscles. He's like, he's got some muscles, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was like, like I'm like a I smaller have. Daniel Cormier with the freaking love handles in the belly. I'm so. looking at the sanctuary. <laughs> the what? <laughs> the sanctuary gift for the hotel that you got us, my mom and I, for Mother's oh Day. Oh, my God. That was years ago. And I'm hoping and praying that it doesn't go out of uh, business. You're. Oh, wow. Right. So, what you're talking about you gotta explain this stuff. oh Nobody's sorry here guys with us. Sorry, Nobody guys. Knows what the hell you're talking about <laughs> sorry. squirrel yeah squirrel so right off camera <laughs> there's a big board and it has a, a gift card for a resort that i bought you like for mother's day for you and your mom yes i don't even know how much money's on that gift card anymore there's some good money yeah. yeah no there is yeah um but you guys just never went got around to doing to going to the resort and getting your nails done or whatever you were gonna do I, yeah like with hotels Everything are freaking that's happening. hurting mm -hmm. you know what they you know what they they did at the hotel that i stayed at what so when they cleaned the rooms they put a sticker on the door like a seal so when i open the door it breaks the seal to the hotel room huh. so that i know that they cleaned it they sealed it and now i'm going in there nobody mm -hmm. else has been in there after they cleaned it oh. and then they don't send up uh, you know, they don't have room service anymore. You have to request room service. They don't just show up at, you know, nine o'clock or whatever and make your bed or do whatever. Yeah. They yeah. don't do that anymore. Now you have to tell them that you want them to come. Interesting. I'm going to have to look up that hotel and see. I hear. So one of my uh, clients had said that what they do her just her and her family um, is they'll go out to a resort because they have the water slides. Oh, and all yeah, right stuff. now. And it's very cheap because no one's going, you know, to stay at a hotel. And so she's like, all the best resorts that are here in Arizona, we have been visiting. That's a good That's idea. A good, right? That's a good I idea. I would love to do that. That would be fun. You probably get some really nice places, like super discounted. Yes. So, yeah, that'd be cool. Let's Let's look into that. And maybe yeah. you guys should look in that too. Put a little fun and happiness in your life. Heck yeah. We're going to go check that out. Yes. Yes. Did you just get one? No, I'm saying for when we go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Good but stuff. yeah, so yeah, it's been a fun week. We had a blast camping and all the other stuff. And now, you know, we're getting back to life. Back to regular life. life. So uh, yeah, just like, I haven't just like worked. everybody else. I looked at my book yeah. since the six, like yeah. that's a long time for me. It is, you know, but it was needed. Yeah, it was needed. No, you've I been feel focusing refreshed. on the kids. Yes. And, and so yeah, I'm ready been, to go. You've been doing awesome with go. the, with the homeschooling and the kids and thank all that. You. Yeah. You've been doing thank great. You, thank you. So anyway, and hopefully you guys out there are doing well too. You guys are surviving the homeschooling yes. and this pandemic and all the stuff that's happening. But, uh, you know, with everything that's going on, we definitely appreciate you guys tuning in to listen to to us and, you know, yes. what's happening. Make sure you're taking care lives. of yourself mentally, so, yeah. like physically, because right now, you know, there's a lot of things that are happening and people are feeling down and out depressed. So make sure that yeah. you're doing something um, to, you know, bring you happiness. Yeah. Giving you some kind of comfort. So, yeah, I want to give a shout out to everybody that listens to the podcast, wherever you're listening from, whether you're listening from Arizona or somewhere else in the United States or somewhere else around yes. the world. Thank, thank you. you guys for listening. Don't forget to go to oppositesattractpodcast.com and you can see everything there. For those of you, I mean, obviously those guys, those of you that listen, you guys are already listening. But uh, the way our podcast grows, if you know anybody that, you know, might be interested in listening to the podcast, share it with them. Share the website. And, uh, you know, we definitely appreciate it. It really definitely. helps us out. Yes. And, uh, you know, thank you for being with us. And until next time. Bye. Bye.